Okay, last time we saw that there are special numbers and special vectors called eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a given matrix A. Um, so if we have a matrix A, then there are these special eigenvectors x, such that when I multiply A times x, I get the same vector direction x, but multiplied by a number lambda. Okay, so x is an eigenvector and lambda is an eigenvalue. And remember, not, you know, if I just take a generic vector x and multiply it by a, I'm not going to get a vector in the same direction. So these are very special vectors x and very special numbers lambda. Most uh, vectors don't satisfy this property. And so now what we're going to do is actually determine how would you solve for these special x's and special lambdas if I gave you a new matrix A. Okay, so for a matrix A, how do you actually solve for these eigenvectors and eigenvalues? Okay, the first step we do, um, this is just going to be some matrix algebra. Um, we're going to solve a system of equations. And the first thing we do is we recognize that this vector uh, lambda times x, you can kind of rewrite this as lambda times the identity times x. So we're going to say um, a times x equals lambda x is really the same as lambda times this big identity matrix times x. Pretty simple, right? Because if I take identity times x, I just get x back. It's the same as writing lambda x. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this whole expression over to the left hand side. And I'm going to say that this is like a minus lambda identity. That whole thing times x equals zero. Okay, so what I did here was I moved this term over to the left hand side. I get ax minus lambda ix equals zero. And both a and this matrix lambda times the identity both multiply x. So I can pull them out in a matrix, this is a matrix, times x has to equal zero. Okay, so this is definitely true for the special vectors x and special numbers lambda that are eigenvectors uh, and eigenvalues. Okay. Good, uh, so this is the basic system we're going to try to solve. We're going to solve this for lambda and we're going to solve this for x. Okay, now there's two uh, kind of generic cases where this might be true. Okay, so there are two, so think about x values that, um, that satisfy this. So case, um, case one is that my vector x could be equal to zero. This could just be, um, these are vectors. This could just be a vector of all zeros. And if I take whatever matrix I take, if I multiply it by a vector of all zeros, then I get a vector of all zeros out. Okay, so that's definitely a possibility is that x could be zero. But this is kind of boring. Okay, this isn't the case we're looking for. We're looking for these special directions x, and zero is not a direction. Okay. So the second case, the interesting case, is where x is not equal to zero. Okay, and then in um, in the case that x is not equal to zero, then the only way um, that this could possibly this matrix could possibly multiply x to get zero is if this matrix here is called singular. Okay, so this is an unverified fact. I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to say and um, this determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. So this is an unverified fact. Um, it takes a little bit more mathematical machinery to really show that this is true. But if, if I want a vector that's non-zero to multiply a minus lambda i and go to zero, then I have to have the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. And in this case we say that um, we say a minus lambda i is singular. Okay, so in some sense this is just definition. So if, if I have a matrix a minus lambda i and if I take its determinant and that determinant equals zero, then we say that a minus lambda i is singular and in that case there are some x vectors that when I multiply them by a minus lambda i, I get the zero that I want. Okay, 
So the first thing we're trying to do is we're trying to find special lambdas that allow this determinant to equal zero. So step one is find lambda such uh, so that the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. Okay, this is extremely important. Um, remember, if I take the determinant of a matrix, I get this big expression in terms of all of the all of the terms. And if I solve for this with a variable lambda, then I get what's called the characteristic equation. And it's a polynomial in lambda. Okay, so we have this polynomial in lambda, and we're trying to find lambdas that make that equal to zero. Okay, so this is going to be um, the, the first step in solving for these eigenvalues and eigenvectors is to find special eigenvalues lambda that make this determinant equal to zero. Okay, that's step one. So let's try this out on a simple matrix, um, the same matrix we did last time. Okay, so we're going to try this out on the matrix, um, the matrix A, which was 3, negative 1, negative 1, 3. Okay, so let's try this on, um, this is my example. We're going to try this on A equals 3, negative 1, negative 1, 3. And the reason I'm choosing this is because we already know the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, right? We solved them. Well, we didn't solve for them, but we demonstrated that there were these special vectors and special values, so we know what they are from the last, um, the last piece of this lecture. And so the first thing we're going to do is try to find this, these values lambda that make this uh, determinant equal to zero. Okay? So this should make a lot more sense when we actually uh, work it out on this example. So the first step is looking at A minus lambda times the identity. Okay? Now, lambda times the identity looks just like an identity matrix, except instead of ones on the diagonal, you have lambdas on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So this is equal to 3, negative 1, negative 1, 3, minus lambda times the identity, lambda 0, 0, lambda. And this gives me the matrix 3 minus lambda, minus 1, minus 1, 3 minus lambda. Okay, see? So A minus lambda I is equal to this uh, matrix here. And what I need to do is I need to find the determinant of this matrix. Okay, so determinant of A minus lambda I. Now you can uh, like Google or look in a textbook for how to take the determinant of a generic n by n matrix, a 3 by 3, 4 by 4, whatever. But for a 2 by 2, it's pretty simple. You just multiply the diagonal elements minus the product of the off-diagonal elements. Okay, so in this case, it's pretty simple. We just have 3 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda, the product of the diagonal, minus the product of the off-diagonal. Minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1, so minus 1. Okay, and I'm going to write this all the way out. Uh, so we get lambda squared minus 6 lambda, lambda squared minus 6 lambda. And then I get a plus 9, 3 times 3, minus 1. So plus 8 all together. And remember, I'm trying to get this determinant equal to 0. Okay, so we're doing really well so far. We have a matrix A. We write down A minus lambda I and we take its determinant and we're trying to set that determinant equal to zero to find the special numbers lambda that allow us to, to solve the eigenvalue equation. Okay, so the next step is pretty simple. We're just going to solve for these values. Okay, so we have um, the last step I'm going to do is just say I can factor this up into uh, lambda minus 4 times lambda minus 2 equals 0. Okay? And that means that lambda can be either 4 or 2. So lambda equals 2. 
and lambda equals 4 solve this equation, determinant of a minus lambda i equals 0. Okay, so these are my special eigenvalues uh, of my matrix A. Lambda equals 2 and lambda equals 4. Okay, good. Now, the last thing that we need to do is to find the eigenvectors x now that we have these eigenvalues. Okay, um, so this isn't, isn't much more complicated. Um, it involves a little bit of, of matrix algebra, but it's nothing, nothing too complicated. So the idea is simple. We know that a times x should equal lambda times x. And now we know our lambdas, okay? So all we're trying to do is find the x that makes that true. So this is a two-step procedure, okay? We find the eigenvalues and then we find the eigenvectors. So for lambda equals 2, this is, uh, this is step two. So step two, for lambda equals two, now we're trying to find, we're trying to find x so that um, a times x equals two times x, equals lambda times x, okay? And remember, we do that by saying a minus two times the identity times x, should equal zero, okay? This is a minus lambda i times x equals zero. And so we're gonna find the x that makes this true. All right, let's do that. Let's say, well, a minus two i is three minus two, minus one, minus one, three minus two is another one. And this times x, let's call this x1 and x2, my two components of x, this should equal zero, zero. Okay, we're trying to find x1 and x2 that make this, this equal to zero. Okay, and this is actually a pretty simple one because you can just solve this in your head, right? We know that if x1 and x2 are both equal to one, then we get one minus one equals zero and minus one plus one equals zero. So this means x equals the vector one, one. Okay, that's my eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals 2, okay? And this is exactly the vector. You can verify that if you multiply this by a, you get exactly 2, 2, 2 times x, okay? So good, we've done the lambda equals 2 case. Now let's do the lambda equals 4 case. Okay, so for uh, lambda equals 4, we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to find ax such that a times x equals 4x. And we do that by solving a minus 4i, right, this is just lambda equals 4. a times 4i times x should equal 0. And a minus 4i, if I take my a matrix and I subtract 4 times the identity matrix, then I get 3 minus 4 is minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. This is a minus 4i, okay? And we're going to multiply this by x1 and x2, and that better equals 0, 0. Good? Okay, now finally, um, this one's also relatively simple. You can solve this one. If you make x1 positive 1, and you make x2 negative 1, then you get these terms are equal and opposite and cancel. Same with this. And so I get my eigenvector is equal to 1 and minus 1. Okay, so let's just try this out. If I take um, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 times my uh, eigenvector, I think it should equal 0. And so let's just do this. Multiply the first row by this column vector, you get minus 1 plus negative one times negative one is positive one. So you get negative one plus one equals zero. Same thing on the bottom, you get negative one plus one equals zero, zero. Okay, so this eigenvector really does satisfy this equation here. Um, in the full-blown generic case where you had a big, you know, five by five or 10 by 10 system, 
you wouldn't just be able to solve this by eyeballing it. You'd actually have to solve this linear system of equations using uh, the AX equals B stuff that we talked about earlier, right? So in MATLAB, you could do backslash, or you could do inv of this, and all kinds of stuff. Or you could do Gauss-Jordan elimination. Um, so, you know, solving for this X vector might actually be kind of challenging or expensive for a full system. But for little 2 by 2 systems, usually you can just solve this by hand uh, and get your eigenvectors once we know our eigenvalues lambda 2 and lambda 4. Okay, so this is the general two-step procedure. Step one, we find lambda, and we find lambda by looking at um, determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero. And step two, right, we find lambdas that make this true. And step two is we find x such that a minus lambda i x equals zero for each of those lambdas that we found, okay? So that's the, the big picture of how you find eigenvalues and eigenvectors for a square matrix A, okay? These are special vectors and special values so that when you multiply them by A, you get the same vector direction, but they're stretched by this amount lambda. They're either made longer or shorter. So in this case, this vector would be made twice as long by lambda equals two, and this vector would be made four times as long by lambda equals four, okay?